When you add text to your videos, do you just add it to the screen in a lifeless, boring manner? Or do you supercharge your words by adding motion to them? Adding motion to text is known as kinetic topography, a video and online format. And today, we're going to look at three cool typography examples and learn the tricks on how to make otherwise boring text come alive in your videos. And it's all going to happen inside Camtasia 9. Of course, the principles in here can be universally applied to other capable editors as well. Real quick, before we dive in, please share how you're currently using kinetic text in your videos, and if so, do you create the effects on your own, or do you buy them? Leave a comment below, and let's go! Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome! If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great video, become a ninja at video editing, and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Let's dive in! What is Kinetic Topography? Kinetic Topography is an animation technique that is used to change text in numerous ways by making it grow, shrink, fly, spin, fall, pop up, pulsate, move in slow or fast motion. The change effect can be simple and short with only small changes or quite elaborate and lengthy. These text animations are often accompanied by other animated graphics like icons, images, lines, and other shapes to create an even greater viewing experience. So why use kinetic topography? I use kinetic topography in almost every video I create. These elements help to grab the viewer's attention in a fun way and at the same time helps to increase your retention time and video shareability. It's also a great tool to help snazzy up slow parts in your videos where you're concerned about potentially losing your audience. Moving text videos are also extensively used in websites to immediately engage the viewer and help improve site stickiness. And for an advertiser or marketer, kinetic topography is used to evoke emotion, better convey ideas, and tell stories. And when combined with other graphics and background music, can also increase the power of persuasion. The bottom line is that kinetic topography videos are more easily understood and the messaging is better retained. Here are a few rapid fire tips for making your text animations. Tip number one, keep the animation short only as long as it needs to be. Tip number two, create something interesting. Tip number three, write an easy to read and understand message. Tip number four, create an emotional connection where applicable. Here are some common motion and behavior patterns to consider for your creations. Number one, slow motion or fast motion. Number two, stretching or shrinking. Number three, movement in arcs or waves showing text moving along curved paths. Number four, anticipated action such as a subtle movement before a sharp one. Number five, follow through actions that happen after something else has happened. And number six, Secondary action when text moves because of something that happens to another element in the frame. Here I am now in Camtasia 9 and we're going to take a bit of a deep dive and look at three nice examples that I created for kinetic topography. And the cool thing is that these are done mostly using the Camtasia custom animations and uh, behaviors. The behaviors are a feature that are new to Camtasia 9 and I combine those with the custom animations and the behaviors really are just you know prepackaged animations that have three stages to their execution one is known as in then during and out and uh, it's pretty cool you'll see how we designed and uh, how I designed and put these together and let's take it a closer look what I wanted to just show you was the basics on how to apply a custom animation and a behavior to an annotation so you can take a text annotation like I have this ABC. I'm going to just delete that now because I just put one on here nicely colored the way I want with the right kind of font. And now I'm just going to go and add on to it a custom animation. So we go to animations here, click on custom. And when I drag it onto the uh, clip here, 
um, the annotation, you can see that there's a beginning keyframe and an end keyframe. You can click on them both. And because I'm dealing with a kinetic topography, I want to have the word happy spin to be on a vertical axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on the end and then use the, the turn to rotate it and then uh, move it into position. So now we can see that when it executes, it moves the word happy up to the vertical. You're going to see this technique used a lot throughout. And that's all that does so far. Now we're going to add a behavior to give a little more flavor to things. So now we go to behavior and I'm going to use the pop-up behavior. And to do that, you just drag the behavior on to the annotation here, the callout, the annotation callout, and then the, it says behavior added. And now you're going to see the pop-up has an in hinge dur uh, during pop-up and then out as a hinge. So let's just observe the hinge. So as we know, we already have the animation part there. Now watch the first few frames as we go. You see it looks like a nice hinge pop-up for the word happy. And then, it, and then as it's rotating, and then you're going to see when it phases out, you're going to see the same kind of, see, there you go, same kind of hinging part, and then it's going to disappear. So I just wanted to show you it's that simple to um, start to play with the custom animations and the behaviors, and you're going to see that used throughout the examples. Okay, so here we are looking at our first example with a deep dive, and um, I just want to show you if you do a quick glance through here, you see there's lines, words part coming in from the side, and a rectangular shape used for our nice red uh, moving stick, and it shrinks, expands, and disappears at the end. So that stick, just to let you know, is really just taking an annotation rectangle, fill rectangle, and we use the color red. But uh, okay, so you got the idea there. Then, as you can see, the shape, the shape in itself, uh, meaning the the sticks. There's there's so there's there's two rectangle. I'll call them sticks for now. And you can see um, they're basically managed through a whole series of custom animations, which define the flow and movement. So as you can see here at the beginning, so uh, one of the sticks, the the sticks go out to the top or to the bottom, and then you'll see the sticks con converge and stretch. So again, you just have to like go on screen and, and you know, re reshape what you want. And then uh, the an animation will draw to what you defined as your end, end frame in the, in the keyframe. And then uh, after we get to this point, only the one shape is continued on. The other one is finished and we can see that the shape it gives a twist there and then it stays and then again the shape will do a sweep across the screen here with the letters and then we also use the shape to bring it down to a spot and then we again stretch it out into a line and then at the very end we're going to make that line disappear so it goes a little bit at a time from that first position all the way down to nothing so that's the shape and that's pretty cool because it gives a lot of motion and and uh, you know twisting and arcing it's kind of very cool to give you a feel of what's going on now the text in here as you can see comes from the side of the screen into the middle and that's achieved through using the behavior the jump and haul, fall behavior so both of those pieces will use a bounce in but then there's nothing in the during and in the out either so we're just using the behavior to bring the text in okay and then the, there's an animation here custom animation done to help shrink the text in the box so that it disappears when the red rectangle comes over it. And the text in the la second to last piece where it says life is a blessing, as you can see the text fades in on one place in the top it's going from left to right and the bottom right to left and then when it comes it fades out as well but both fade out to the right and that's all achieved through using the behavior which is right here so it was a fade and so fade in and it was uh, doing the diagonal left and then during and then out fade out so that's just using behavior so you experiment with those and the timings to get what you'd like and then the last piece of text which is very cool as you can see it drops in so this this uh, um, behavior is the jump and fall behavior and it's using a bounce in and then in the during phase it's a jump and then the text drops off in the out phase 
So as you can see how the letters drop and then the line f gradually fades and disappears. So you can see you can be quite creative combining the custom animations in Camtasia with the behaviors and a little ingenuity and you got a nice little uh, cool message. Now let's go to the next example. So here we are in example two which is freedom from the tyranny of opposites. It's all words, there's no other shapes or anything special involved here. So it's predominantly just a few um, behaviors and some animations, custom animations to change the angle. So as you can see here with the word freedom, uh, the, the begin and end keyframe here, it goes from flat to uh, vertical. And then the word from here on this animation goes from, from horizontal to you know flipped upside down and then here in this animation the word from goes you know to vertical so that just gives you an idea of how the animations were utilized and now we're going to take a quick look at um, the behaviors so here in this first one we're, we're looking at the word freedom and you can see it says it's drifting and the behavior is bounce in and then sliding and in the bounce in the text comes from first to last so as you can see the letters are bouncing from first to last and then um, eventually the behavior see the letters of the word uh, sorry of, um, of freedom going off to the left there so that gives you the idea of, again how the out is working and its text going from right to left and that's pretty straightforward now we're going up to the next level of text on this track which is the word from and from the behavior standpoint we're looking at it says it's scale and as you can see right at the start it, it it grows from nothing into the word from and then at the very end you're gonna see it goes from from to nothing so it shrinks so that's validated here by just looking at the scale behavior here it says grow when it comes in and on the out it does a shrink so again, you can play with the other details on how you want the letters to appear as they grow and shrink, but that's up to you with your playing. And then the next level here is dealing with the words, the tyranny uh, of, and as you can see, the tyranny of slides in from the left, from the right to the left, and then when it's going out, it just fades out. So in here, we'll look at the property, close this one, open this one. It's called drifting property. And on the end, it does a bounce in from left to right, which we can see again, the text coming in. And then on the out, as we saw, it's uh, a, diag a fade out, a diagonal left. So there's the fade out of the tyranny of. And the last piece is the word opposites, which as you can see now, if we open up the behavior, it's using a pop-up and that's pretty clear because right here at the beginning, it pops up nicely. And then it sort of stays with the pop-up motif and then on the end it slides out to the right with an interesting kind of letter uh, grouping and that's called sliding using the ease out movement to the right and again you can play with these parameters but I'm just you know showing you so that you can play and get an idea of how this all came together and that's it for example number two so in the final example here this one's very cool because I use a picture and I text words it's a happy birthday message and I have music and pulsing and so you know you're getting to see the usage of pictures and, and which is like another dimension and combined with music and I'm gonna play this at the end after we walk through the example so first off as you can see the bottom track is the music track here and then the first uh, piece to the puzzle is this picture and the picture as you can see it's, it's sort of hinged it pops up and then it zooms in so we have a custom animation here where it goes from there and zooms in a bit but while it's zooming in it's 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 you know coming with the behavior of pop-up and as you can see on the in it's using the hinge and uh, a hinge on the way out too so there we go hinging on the in, zoom in and then it's hinging and uh, and it folds okay then we come up with the words you're gonna see happy birthday Alex now all all the, the words are utilizing the pop-up and you can see characteristically when we start for example with the happy see how it's popping up like that there you go and then so all the words are using that same concept when they come up and then when they when they phase out you're gonna see that the, there's also some elements of uh, that and well in this case it just converged but see here's the pop-up you saw the letters kind of pop up 
and then uh, if we get towards the end you'll see there they, they fall down but they're going from left to right so the principles are the same in terms of the pop-up and feature that's used for each of these three words and then we also have the custom animations where we're again moving from here horizontal to vertical and then again with the word happy we're, we're then uh, changing if you go look at the visual properties you can see here how this was done the y-axis properties were used and you can look at those more closely if you wanted to pause and then back into the word birthday it went from like a vertical flip to a uh, eventually to a horizontal and then the then the word Alex was upside down and you can see here it sort of does a 180 as you can see that's a total uh, flip around all right and you can see the visual properties how that was handled it went from minus 180 to zero and then the last stage of Alex goes from that and then you see it disappear so again this is all X axis and adjustment in the visual properties here so you can see that how that happens here okay then after the word Alex comes out you now see the picture which I gave a pulsating um, display as you can see here pulsating behavior you can see how it's nicely pulsating in the beginning and it's even you know nicely matching the text uh, which is also sort of moving but it's using the shifting uh, behavior and in the in during and out it's shifting the whole way and the only added customization was to increase the speed a bit and as well address the loop time so that when you hear the music you'll see that both the picture and the words sort of pulsate nicely to it and then as it fades out you're gonna see here there it shrinks All right, there you go and that's it now we're gonna listen to this example so you can see how it feels and the emotion of it with the music and the beat with the words and the pictures moving it's pretty cool <laughs> Wow, kinetic topography rocks, and it's one of my go-to techniques for video creation. If you want more cool tips for video creating and you wish to create better videos from home, click on the link for my free ebook. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe icon on this page so that you get more videos like this one in the future. And thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.